The School of Champions is a label that carries tremendous pride for the Everett High School community. This is the reputation steeped in legendary lore, stuff of great figures, rich in tradition, and time-tested grit. The roots of this label go back to the early 1900s when a young Enoch Bagshaw arrived at the Everett High School campus. From those roots, the greatest football program of any high school west of the Mississippi for the 20th century was forged in the hard-scrabbled mill town known as the City of Smokestacks. The names of this era have lived on for 100 years. Names like Bagshaw, Fred Westrom, George Wildcat Wilson, Glenn Carlson, Carl Michelle, Roy Seavers, Harold Britt, Chalmers Walters, Les Sherman, George Gatormson, Arthur Ingram, Merle Dixon, Edward Manning, Ray Witham, Walter Morgan, Clarence Torgerson, and many others. Many who went on to play for Coach Bagshaw at the University of Washington that culminated in a Rose Bowl appearance for the Huskies. Certainly even in the mid-70s when I was at Everett High School, we were uh, very aware uh, of the legacies of multiple Seagull football teams uh, of the past, certainly starting with the late teens, 20s, the Enoch Bagshaw era. But while these young men were still wearing the blue and gold on that glorious New Year's Day in 1921, 20,000 fans packed into the stands and lined the field for the battle between Everett High School and East Technical High, the undefeated team from Ohio that had traveled west to take on Baggies boys for the right to be crowned national champions. The City of Smokestacks. The standard established under Coach Bagshaw had a lasting legacy on a school that's situated in a town that was rife with civil strife. Just four years earlier, the sheriff and his deputies had engaged in a shootout on the waterfront with the International Workers of the World Union, a confrontation that resulted in at least seven deaths and became known as the infamous Everett Massacre. It was a town where the contrast between the haves and the have-nots was striking, and tension in the early 1900s on the streets of Everett was palpable. But it was at Everett High School where the wealthy timber baron's children sat next to mill workers' children, where the owner's son blocked for the mill worker's son to score. It was in the halls of Everett High that the next generation learned champions come together. Newspaper columnist and city leader Rosie Weyberg wrote, It did not matter whether it was a banker or laborer, merchant or professional man. They all met on a common ground when baggy and football were under discussion. And from this sprang an era of civic solidity. I remember playing at Bagshaw Field uh, at North Junior High School when I was playing at South. And that's uh, when we first started hearing about him. It was on the gridiron where a high school inspired the young town to believe that hard work, strict discipline, and working together could create something special. The one thing that the mill owners and the mill workers could agree on was uh, Everett High School football. And there's a classic story about how the, the banker could talk to the, the poorest neighbor in his, uh, around and they could go on for hours about Everett High School football. So it truly was a, a civic unifier for the community. Much work went into reaching the national championship game for the team that was to become known as the Seagulls. Games against colleges and military teams, games against the best teams from Oregon, Utah, and Southern California. Games that ended up with lopsided cumulative score of 432 to 27. The final preparation for the right to play in the national championship game began with the boys from Everett dismantling the University of Washington freshman 20 to nothing. Next team to fall was St. Martin's College 19 to nothing. Then came three games that would change Everett High School forever. Against the best of the West had to offer, the Oregon champs from the Dalles, which ended up in a lopsided 90 to seven victory for Everett. It was noticed that a large gray seagull was flying over the field. Next ever took on East High of Salt Lake City, the champions from Utah in a Thanksgiving Day showdown where they easily defeated the Leopards 67 to nothing. Again, a large gray seagull was seen circling the field. Everett went on the road to provide a 28 to nothing thumping of Southern California champions from Long Beach, a game that was attended by 15,000 fans. Across the Telegraph, it was reported that a large white seagull was flying over the field to which the crowd of 1,500 in the auditorium cheered. Searching to play the best east of the Mississippi, Bagshaw was able to secure a game against East Tech from Cleveland, Ohio, a team that had outscored their opponents 462-7. to 
including a win over the 1919 co-national champions from Scott High School from Toledo, Ohio. The game was scheduled for New Year's Day 1921 in Everett. All 20,000 tickets sold out in three hours. To say the championship game lived up to its billing is an understatement. After a scoreless first quarter, Everett took a 16 to nothing lead in the second, in part due to a couple of East Tech miscues. Neither team scored in the third quarter, but East Tech seemed to dominate play into the fourth. Their persistence paid off with a touchdown, but that was not enough. All throughout the game, a large gray seagull floated over the field. Now an omen of good luck to the fans. And with each appearance, the crowd went wild. Bagshaw's team prevailed 16-7, securing their second consecutive national championship and their ninth consecutive state title. Everett winning a uh, national championship in um, 100 years ago, that was a really big deal. The Seagull was named the school mascot, and Bagshaw would move on to coach for the University of Washington the next year. We were very aware of the Enoch Bagshaw legacy at uh, Everett and the great accomplishments there. Uh, and then obviously my Husky connections, I knew, uh, knew what, he, what he did uh, after he moved on from Everett High School. So uh, uh, Enoch Bagshaw and knowing what he was all about, what he meant to Everett, what he meant to the University of Washington was something that uh, uh, meant a lot to me. Well, it's kind of ironic that Coach Bagshaw went to the Huskies so stepped down coming from Everett High School to go to the coach at the Huskies, but he was able to take the Huskies to two Rose Bowls. And of course, I was very fortunate to take the, two, the Cougars to two Rose Bowls also. So we had that going for us. <laughs> I think you could say Everett was really a town that in many ways was at war with itself. But there was one thing that the mill workers and the mill owners could agree on and that was the Everett High School football was the best. The 1919 and 1920 National Championship teams were the beginning of something special. Ranked in the comprehensive source of all high school football for the 20th century as the best football program west of the Mississippi and sixth best in the entire United States from 1900 to 1999, and once considered the cradle of football coaching by Sports Illustrated, Everett High School continues to cultivate a rich tradition of honoring the past and embracing the future. The Everett mystique was really something a few years ago when uh, Jim Lambright, uh, Everett High graduate, was the head football coach at the University of Washington. And uh, Dennis Erickson was the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. And me, Mike Price, was the head coach at Washington State Cougars. All for a couple of years there, where we had the top three jobs, athletic football jobs, in the state of Washington, a tribute to Everett High School. Because of the reputation of the football program, the school justifiably labeled itself as the School of Champions. Again, uh, like I said, in the state of Washington, there was never a better program than Everett. From the cradle of football lore to the 21st century, the expectation has always been that every student delivers one's best on the field or in the classroom. The connection the Everett High graduates have carried with them as they venture out into the world is indelible. Throughout the years, Everett High Athletics became the place of many championship teams, with 45 state and regional championships and over 300 league and district championships. What went into the fabric of Everett High are the traits Bagshaw drilled into the football team of 1920. Today, students in athletics, drama, NJROTC, band, DECA, and leadership walk the halls of Everett High School with the same champ's spirit, character, heart, attitude, mindset, perseverance, and strength. These are the traits of this school over the last 100 years, a school where its rich history is honored as its future is embraced. Excited to continue to bring the School of Champion motto every year to every athlete, to every student, in everything that they do. To this day, when a seagull floats above the Everett High campus, it's a reminder that something special happens when we come together and it continues to happen every day because we are Everett.